This is Ag Grad Live. We have all of the different segments within the cotton. The show that explores what it's really like to work in the ag industry. So making sure that we get policy and regulatory issues. Straight from the people who live it every day. Hello, Ag Grads. We are back with another Ag Grad Live. Really, really excited about this one. We're gonna do another career spotlight. Uh, actually, I don't know if I said this on the show yet, but I, I sent out a tweet a while back about, hey, here's the type of people we're looking for and uh, got some really, really great career spotlights lined up. And I, I wanted to get this one as soon as possible because I think it's really gonna be uh, a great show. It, it, and that reminds me, before I forget, because I keep forgetting, if any of you are watching and your company hires either interns or people straight out of college, uh, we offer free postings for internships and entry-level jobs on aggrad.com. So you might let uh, somebody in your company know that they can go list those there and get access to a community of young, ambitious uh, professionals, either straight out of college or looking to pivot into the industry. So make sure you head over that way. Uh, last week, we had Tim Braun on the show, and he sells seed a retail up in Minnesota. And now we are going to get someone on the show who's on the complete other side of the supply chain. So it's really cool to think about all the work that goes into your food being uh, produced. And a lot of people think like, oh, it starts with the farmer planting the seed. But it actually starts a lot before that, because where does that seed come from? How does it get there? And uh, we have someone on the show who's going to tell us all about what it's like to work in seed production. And it's, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to bring her on. This is Hannah Neuenschwander. Uh, Hannah, you are on the show. Hi, everyone. Welcome. No, this this is great. I'm excited about this. Uh, Hannah, you are up in Iowa and you work for Monsanto. Yep, that's correct. Right? OK, and so your job is production manager. G give us kind of the the quick spiel about what does a production manager do for a seed company? Sure. Um, so it's a little bit different depending on what crop you're working in. Um, Monsanto has um, kind of plant production managers, so they oversee what goes on in the packaging plant um, and also fields, so how the seed is grown. Um, here in Williamsburg, I'm a production manager over our warehouse, so it's my job to inventory and distribute all of Monsanto's North American pre-commercial corn seed. Okay, and so you're in the field or you're in the plant? I'm in the plant. Um, okay. It's kind of cool with, with my job since you know farming and agriculture is seasonal um during the winter i spend a lot of time inside but during the summer i do get to go out into the fields and take observations and things like that so okay a little of and everything one would think with that uh responsibility you must have gr grown up in a cornfield not at all <laughs> very far from corn <laughs> so and i you actually i actually grew up in texas in the hill country um where we grow a lot of rocks not a lot of grow crops <laughs> so um I I don't even know how I got here. It's it's a chain of fate, I think. <laughs> what was the first step? Did they find you at like a career fair or how did you end up going to work for Monsanto? Yep, that's exactly where they found me. So I um, went to Texas A&M where I got a bachelor's in animal science. Uh, I didn't really have a plan for that major. I just really enjoyed working with animals and horses specifically. So I pursued that degree because I went by the, the term, you know, if you follow something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. So mm -hmm. That was my plan. Um, and then my final career fair at A&M as a student, I stopped by the Monsanto booth actually on a whim because I had an extra resume. I was on my way out. Um, so I stopped by there and I got an interview from that career fair. And what do you think it was about you as an animal science major, not having grown up around corn or row crops at all? What do you think it was about you that that allowed you this opportunity? I mean, how did they how did they kind of say, you know what, Hannah, even though she doesn't have that background, she is what we're looking for. Yeah, so I think one thing I've learned since coming here is Monsanto has a lot of really uh, diverse people that work for them. So I think my extracurriculars in college, particularly around um, leadership, I think that was something that they really looked for, especially since the role that I entered into was a entry-level management role. I was originally a production associate, which is kind of the first step, and then was pr promoted to production manager. So they look for um, the ability to communicate, collaborate, be inclusive, lead teams. So it's a lot more about the soft skills that you have um, versus maybe what you went to school for. Okay, cool. And, and those of us that are joining live, feel free to ask questions as well. Uh, we'll get them answered uh, from Hannah before the, the end of the show here. Uh, happy that you all are with us. Um, so what's that timeline like? So you started as a production associate and now you're production manager. How long ago did you start and how quickly did that advance, advancement happen? 
So I was a production associate for two years, actually at a commercial soybean facility in Illinois originally. Um, so that role is typically 18 months to 36 months that you're in that role. Um, and then it's just a progressive. It's kind of cool because you're expected to be promoted. You know, they don't want you in that role long term. So um, I've been production manager here for one year and I expect to be here a couple more and then it's on to the next thing. So it's kind of cool. I get to move around and experience a lot of different areas of the company. Cool. Yeah. And, and most of us in ag, uh, you know, understand kind of what Mon- Monsanto does, but I'm sure you talk to a lot of, a lot of people, especially those outside of ag that have questions because mm-hmm. there is so much in, in the media, et cetera, about Monsanto and a lot of misperceptions. So what's it like, you know, from firsthand experience, you know, what's it like to work for them and how do you kind of handle the questions that you probably get? Yeah. So um, I guess it's, it's kind of interesting. I see a lot more people on social media that get flack for being a, a shill for Monsanto and they get a lot harder time about it than someone like me who actually does work for the company. Mm-hmm. So I think there's just something about, um, you know, people's perception. They imagine that you're in a lab or with a lab coat and syringe and stuff. But when you actually put a face to it, I think they have a lot less ammunition to go off of. So I haven't gotten a lot of negativity honestly, compared to some people that I've seen. Mm. Um, but when I do, it's, it's, it's just, I ask questions. I'm like, well, where did you hear that? Why do you think that? And I just want to understand where they got their information originally so that then I can say, well, my experience as someone who works for Monsanto is, is X. So it, it's been really interesting and it's, it's brought me out of my comfort zone a lot. Um, but I really enjoy it. Well, t- tell us more about that experience. You know, what, what have you enjoyed <laughs> Um, about your job and the company you work for um, in these, what, three three years, three I years, guess. Yep. yep, three years you've been with them. So I think my favorite part about working for Monsanto, other than the fact that I've gotten to continuously keep learning, um, so I'm challenged in a good way where I, I keep getting to experience new things, um, but Monsanto is really supportive um, of your personal and professional development. So I've got to do a lot of really cool things just that I've sought out on my own, such as starting the blog that has opened opportunities for me in the company to, to talk to others about what I'm doing, how I'm sharing Monsanto's message. Um, I get to do cool things like this on your Facebook Live, and I've done a couple of Snapchat takeovers for you guys. So mm-hmm. um, surprisingly, you would think a company like that that has a lot of, um, gets a lot of negative press that they'd want to kind of keep a lid on their employees and make sure no one's out there saying something wrong. But um, there's a lot of support out there for us to just tell our story as an employee, and I really appreciate that about the company. Very cool. And I will say to every, everybody tuning in, you know, uh, this is not sponsored by Monsanto or, or anyone else. So I reached out to Hannah uh, because I really wanted to hear about this side of agriculture. And I thought it was really important for us to discuss that kind of what it is like, because I can imagine there are some questions. So uh, just curious, this show doesn't have a sponsor. So if, if you'd like to sponsor the show, please uh, let, let me know. But I, I am curious, uh, Hannah, about how, how is seed produced? Uh, you know, what, what is the process? Uh, there's, you know, each plant has, has male, male parts and female parts. I don't know if that's how you refer to them, but uh, kind of, you know, what is the process you go through to, to bring seed into the, the bags that get sold to the farmer? Sure. So I'm going to speak from a corn perspective because that's the only crop that I know about right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but initially, it starts with a corn breeder. So we have breeders that are out there. Um, they're looking for native traits. They're using germplasm from all over the world to develop um, superior inbred lines of corn. So for those of you that don't know, the, the seed that farmers plant is a hybrid seed. So it, in corn seed production, we're producing the inbreds that will make up those hybrids. So the breeders spend seven to 10 years developing a conventional non-GMO inbred line that has really great genetics. Um, and then the next step will be to pass it on to a group that actually integrates the trait package that we want. Um, I had a breeder describe it to me really well once. He said that um, you can think of genetic engineering as a way to protect the potential of the genetics that breeders like him spent a decade developing. So I thought that was a really cool way mm-hmm. to look at it. Um, so once it undergoes the trait integration, that's actually when it comes to my group in pre-commercial corn. So we'll plant... Um, 60 to 80 rows of this inbred and our job is basically to increase it to a quantity that it can be increased further and also to purify and and do a lot of quality and genetic tests to make sure that um, we have the trait that we want we don't have any traits that we don't want um, that it's homozygous because of course we want it to be as as pure of a line as possible 
um, we'll hand pollinate everything. So that that's a large part of our summer work is going around and bagging all the silks, bagging all the tassels, and then going and making that physical pollination. And then the seed that we harvest actually gets passed on to another pre-commercial group that will grow um, in larger amounts. So they'll grow acres of one inbred, whereas we were just growing, like I said, 60 to 80 rows. Mm -hmm. So once that group harvests their acres, then it goes to a commercial plant where um, they make up the hybrids. So we're about two years away from being in a farmer's field at my point. Oh, wow. Two years. And I don't know if you think about things this way, uh, but I'm curious, like, do you know one acre of, of seed corn, how many acres will that plant? Or do you, do you think about it in those terms? I don't because we work in rows. So we're planting okay. about, about 20 plants per row. Um, so I, I guess I haven't got that far yet. Different I haven't dimensions. seen that side. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, your job, what, what do you enjoy most about, about the work you do? I really like the field work. So I've, I've, you know, working in the warehouse and the distribution, I really feel like um, whether I'm in the field or in the warehouse or behind a desk, the work that I'm doing is producing seed for our pipeline that's going to help a farmer. So I think my favorite thing is just that no matter how mundane the task I'm doing, I really feel like at the end of the day that I'm making a difference for farmers. Hmm. That's pretty cool. And uh, how many people work at your facility? I'm just curious about like the, the manpower yeah. it takes to, to, to produce the seed. So we, we only have about 15 to 20 full-time employees. Uh, we rely a lot on um, seasonal workers that come in in the summer. So we have anywhere from 250 to 500 um, migrant workers that come and work for us. And we could not do the job that we do here without them. Hmm. And for, for you, what do you find most challenging about being a production manager for a seed company? Oh, you know, like I said, um, I have a pretty important role, or at least in my head, I've, I've mm -hmm. decided that this is a really important role to have mm -hmm. in the company. And sometimes that comes with a lot of pressure. So um, when we're in our busy shipping season where we're harvesting things out of the field and then it's getting shipped directly out to um, South America or to one of our foundation sites, there's just a lot of pressure to get everything where it needs to be when it needs to be in the ground by. So of course everyone always needs their seed yesterday. Right. Yeah. And if I don't get the seed to the right people, then the pipeline doesn't advance and the farmer doesn't end up with this hybrid, you know, it might take another year for him to get it. So I do feel a lot of pressure sometimes, but you know, I've helped, it's helped me to learn to be composed under pressure and um, I've had to learn about work-life balance. So not leaving the office at eight o'clock, trying to leave on time. And when I go home, remind myself that it's only corn seed and that I'll have all day tomorrow to, to work out any problems that I've had during the other day. So, yeah, I know I, I find myself needing, needing that reminder as well. Um, so fr from your facility, how long, how long from the field to when it's like processed? how long does that processing time take? Um, we have a lot of different inbred lines. So we'll just, I don't want to give numbers here, but let's just say we have a thousand different inbred lines. So we work in really small quantities. So we'll harvest everything by hand again out of the field, and then it'll sit on a dryer bed um, for about two to three days until it's dried down. And then it undergoes our, our shelling process. So it depends on how backed up we are, but I mean, theoretically it could go from field to bag in about two or three days. Okay. And then where does it go from your facility? So it'll go from my facility to, um, a couple different internal customers. The first, the main customer would be the next pre-commercial site, which we call Foundation. Um, so they're the ones that are planting several acres worth of our seed. Hmm. But at the same time, I have two other really important customers that are doing um, hybrid makeup testing. And they're also um, taking notes and doing experiments on the inbreds themselves. So these, this hybrid makeup group is um, determining which inbreds do we want to cross to make the best hybrids. So if they don't get the seed, it doesn't matter if we're increasing it for a commercial site. And if the parent testing group doesn't get the seed, then the production sites don't know, you know, when do I need to detassel this field? When's a good time to plant? What's the yield? What mm -hmm. population should I plant? So those are kind of the different customers that we send it out to. Cool. I picture someone coming in late to this broadcast and hearing us talk about inbreds <laughs> and hybrids and like what? But we are talking <laughs> about that. we are talking about seed uh, here. And, and Hannah Neuenschwander is a production manager for Monsanto, uh, so she's actually producing the seed that will eventually end up 
uh, in farmers fields. So Hannah, you said basically what you guys are doing is, is, you know, taking uh, a very small amount of this seed and trying to protect, protect the traits, but multiply it out so that you can have more quantity basically. Is that right? Yep. That's exactly right. Okay, cool. If somebody's interested and wants to get into this line of work, um, what would you recommend to them? What's it, you know, what can they do to prepare yourself and what types of qualities does a company like Monsanto look for on their production side? Sure. So Monsanto does offer quite a few internships um, in the summer. So if you work at a, or if you go to school somewhere where you have career fairs, definitely see if you can find a Monsanto booth there. Um, there, I would say there's a pretty good percentage of our interns that if they're looking for a job when they graduate, that it's a good way to get your foot in the door. Um, as far as qualities go, like I said, um, just having a lot of good experiences on your resume and um, in your interview, using examples of things that you've actually done. So real life examples versus theoretical. So not saying, well, if I was in this position, I would do it this way, saying, well, this one time I had an experience and this is how I handled it. Mm -hmm. So the leadership skills, um, collaboration, those are all things that you should, you should showcase about yourself um, for this company for sure. Cool. And then how about um, just kind of one general career advice tip? What's the, the best career advice that you either like to either has helped you the most or that you like to give? Oh, I think in my situation, the best advice I have is to keep an open mind um, because the world has something planned for you that you've never imagined. In mm. my case, I, you know, I had my, my mind set on animal science. And if I hadn't taken a, a chance on a company on a seed production, which I knew zero about, I wouldn't have ended up in this career that I really love. So it's one of those things where um, there might be something out there for you that you've, you haven't even thought of yet. So don't be so focused on one role that you're, that you're looking for that you let other opportunities pass you by. Cool. I, I think that is so important. It, it, what's funny is, as I've looked for guests for the show, I have not sought people out that necessarily moved away from home. I, that hasn't been a criteria that's been important to me. But what I have sought out is people who are feeling like they're very happy and very successful in their career at this stage in their career. And almost every single one of them had had taken the leap to go elsewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so yeah. it's, it's just kind of one of those things that it's ending up that way. And we'll see as we continue to do these episodes if that trend uh, continues. But before we let you go, I do want to plug your blog here because you keep your own personal blog at Texan meets Midwest.com. Did I have, did I get that right? Yep, that's correct. Okay. So everyone who's tuning in, make sure you go check out Hannah's blog at Texan meets Midwest.com. Uh, very kind of you, Hannah, to join us for the show. I'm, I'm really, I enjoy learning about this stuff because there's so much to agriculture that gets overlooked that they go, oh, yeah, farmer, grain elevator processor done. And there's just, mm -hmm. it's such a complex supply chain. It's really cool to have somebody uh, who's an up and comer in mm -hmm. uh, the seed production industry. So thank you for joining the show. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. I'll also say to those uh, tuning in to follow Hannah on Twitter. She is very active on Twitter as I am. So I'm going to put her uh, Twitter handle if I can do this without ruining things. Yeah. Her Twitter, Twitter handle up there as well. So check that out for those listening. Uh, when this gets turned into a podcast, it's Hannah Aggie 2014. Did I get that right, Hannah? Yep, that's right. Okay. All right. We're going to sign off here, but make sure you keep tuning in for these AgRed Live podcasts. I love these career spotlights. It's so cool to see uh, the amazing opportunities that exist in this industry. If you'd like to get more plugged in to find out what opportunities might be available for you, uh, head over to jobs.agrad.com. We would love it if you'd create a profile and we will be in touch about opportunities we see in the industry. Thank you for joining AgRed Live. Visit aggrad.com. That's A-G-G-R-A-D. To join the community, create your profile, and learn more about careers in the agriculture industry.